Today's conversation is inspired by the practical magic of Nikola Tesla, which I believe we all have access to. One of his more popular lines was, "If you want to find the secrets of the universe, think in terms of energy, frequency, and vibration." Tesla believed that the universe was a vast source of infinite energy and intelligence. As he once said, "My brain is only a receiver in the universe. There is a core from which we obtain knowledge, strength, and inspiration." I haven't penetrated the secrets of this core, but I know that it exists. Now, at any point, we are tapping into it. You and I are doing it right now. You are life itself, and life itself is infinitely intelligent. Although we are conscious of some aspects of consciousness, there is also infinitely more that is subconscious in consciousness. Now this is powerful for bringing forth material objects, resources, and even personal relationships, which I relate to with my examples in this video. I believe it was his ability that we all have to visualize invention as though it is an objective fact and remaining faithful in knowing that it is true, till this infinite energy is transmuted into form. You see. Our mind weaves a story projected upon energy, which gives form as appearance. The way we imagine the world to be determines what and how it appears. And although there are many theories of how what we imagine appears, which I certainly have my own, we're taught to not worry about those details and simply imagine it as real, exactly like how it was taught. In many ancient scriptures, which mention that creation is complete, and it is through our minds which we can will what already exists in imagination into physical appearance. And by will, I'm not referring to force or control. I'm referring to faith, which is loyalty to the unseen reality of your vision. Those who practice imagination and faith regularly have discovered this unseen creative power, whatever they may label it as or define however they'd like, and proven it beyond any doubt, like Nikola Tesla. In the Master Key System by Charles Hano, he describes Tesla's process for invention, perfectly aligned with our recent conversations. He says, Nikola Tesla, he with the giant intellect. And as we mentioned, he also sees himself as a person that receives infinite intelligence. One of the greatest inventors of all ages, the man who has brought forth the most amazing realities, always visualizes his inventions before attempting to work them out. He does not rush to embody them in form and then spend his time in correcting defects. Having first built up the idea in his imagination, he holds it there as a mental picture to be reconstructed and improved by his thoughts. In this way, he writes in the Electrical Experimenter, "I am enabled to rapidly develop and perfect a conception without touching anything. When I've gone so far to embody in the invention every possible improvement I can think of." And see no fault anywhere. I put into concrete form the product of my brain, and as mentioned earlier, as he said, my brain is only a receiver in the universe. There is a core from which we obtain knowledge, strength, and inspiration. And to continue, he said, invariably, my device works as I conceived it should. In twenty years. There has not been a single exception. Now, as mentioned, we all have the ability to do this. Actually, we're doing it all the time, whether we are consciously aware of it or not. And in today's conversation, I'd like to further encourage this inherent ability you already have to consciously transmute thought 
into physical form. So a while back, as part of my IT business in 2009, I took some open source software, which is software that can be modified, customized, rebranded, etc. And this software was called Open Bravo. It was a retail point of sale system. I believe it's still around. And we did many installs for restaurants, bars, and retail locations around the city with some customizations we came up with. What was interesting upon reflection was how easily and effortlessly the resources, assets, relationships, and deals showed up by applying two keys, imagination and faith. Now, in relation, let's explore these five quotes here from the same chapter in the Master Key System where he discussed Nikola Tesla. I first read the Master Key System in 2008, and I like to revisit it often. And we've been revisiting it many times on this channel throughout the years. This chapter helped me build my IT business, I'd say, more so than the other chapters of the book, although I'd say they were all helpful and contributed to each other. Now, the Master Key System by Charles Hano was originally offered as a 24-week correspondence course in 1912, and I believe in 1916 it was offered in book form. The book wasn't based on conjecture. It was his personal experiences working with the law. Prior to, he formed the Continental Commercial Company in 1905, which included a sugar and coffee plantation, as well as six additional companies that were absorbed into the whole. At the time, it was worth a value of $2.5 million. By today's purchasing power standards, it would be around $86 million. Building upon those successes, he also went on to form many other companies, including the Sacramento Valley Improvement Company, Vineyards, and a mining company. He says, Visualization is the process of making mental images, and the image is the mold or model which will serve as a pattern from which your future will emerge. So the company that I used to work for, I did 10 years in corporate prior to starting my IT business. My department did the in-house IT services for the head office and the two distribution centers. We now and then would bring in specialists for certain projects, one of which I ended up becoming friends with the owners of the company, and I was inspired by them for my mental image. Seeing how they ran their business was a huge inspiration for me, for how I would have liked my future to be. The way they were in meetings, how they were with their clients. This was my mental picture that I formed that one day became the reality. He says, Make the pattern clear and make it beautiful. Do not be afraid. Make it grand. Remember that no limitation can be placed upon you by anyone but yourself. You are not limited as to the cost or material. Draw on the infinite for your supply. Construct it in your imagination. So this is where we acknowledge that the infinite power within us is all-loving, all-knowing, and all-wise. And the ways of how our mental image becomes a physical reality reveals themselves without the need for conscious interference, as acceptance of the end, which is the vision, wills the means. And that's where faith comes in. Faith is knowing that even if one does not consciously know how and when things will happen, it will happen. And again, not by unnecessary human force or control, but by faith, which is beyond human will. So when we look at Tesla, he believed that energy was infinitely intelligent and all around him. He would imagine his invention and actually work it out in his imagination, probably for extended periods of time. What this does is it leaves an impression on the subconscious mind, similar like what we discussed in Tuesday's video, which I'll link to in the description. We have a conscious mind and subconscious mind. It's actually one mind which you can call known and unknown aspects of mind, if you like. The subconscious mind is interconnected with infinite intelligence, the source of all life and everything, actually. All within your mind. 
and all is mind, the universe is mental. All minds are interconnected. And so we want to think in terms of energy, vibration, and frequency, as Tesla had mentioned. To make sense of this, let's relate to this quote here from the Kabbalion. It says, All manifestation of thought, emotion, reason, will, or desire, or any mental state or condition, are accompanied by vibrations, a portion of which are thrown off and which tend to affect the minds of other people by induction. This is the principle which produces the phenomena of telepathy. In relation to our invention, or what we see in our imagination, this is where those that are in mutual harmony and benefit to your vision, while you are in benefit with their vision, also shows up like in my experience I shared. So by Tesla forming in his imagination, or we could say receiving form in imagination, as all things already exist in imagination, and accepting it as true, by his faith, or you could say the truth, whatever you'd like, it gets translated into physical form as the theatrical appearances of people, resources, and whatever that contribute to the realization of the appearance of physical invention. And remember, with the Master Key System, we're discussing this from a metaphysical perspective. As the metaphysical acts in imagination is what impresses or we could say instructs the power of your subconscious mind to bring into physical appearance. So with your mind's eye, you see the contents of eternity. And whatever you imagine as far as invention or innovation is said to already exist in imagination. If we dwell in certain contents of eternity in our imagination as though we are experiencing them in physical form. This impresses the subconscious mind and the unseen power which does everything is called upon with those instructions to bring it into existence. This includes orchestrating all the resources, relationships, plans, etc. And if there's a finger to be lifted, you'll know clearly with your hunches and inspirations. So I say, accept what you consciously choose to see in your imagination. And then the infinite power within your subconscious mind takes care of the coordination in synchronistic and magical ways. For example, it turns out that my mentor, who I was inspired by, mentioned earlier, was actually the one who told me about Open Bravo, which ended up turning into part of my IT business initiatives. In 2009, one of my friends wanted to check out a restaurant during a weekday, and so we went. I ran into someone from my high school and he mentioned that he was partnering up with someone to open up a lounge restaurant type of place down the street. And he asked me if there was any services I could do for them. My IT services were usually for offices, but I agreed to check it out. And so they asked me to build a point of sale system. And so he said, if I could build one for their kitchen, waiters, inventory, etc., link it all together, they would also refer me to many businesses as they knew many in the city. So when I called up my mentor asking him how to do it, he quickly mentioned Open Bravo. And this place ended up being my first install. So it's amazing how everything comes together nicely in relation to a vision. The resources, the relationships, and all moves are made naturally. And upon connecting the dots looking backwards, you see how it all worked out with imagination and faith. He says, Make the image clear and clean cut. Hold it firmly in the mind and you will gradually and constantly bring the thing nearer to you. You can be what you will to be. What you will to be refers to accepting that you already are that as there's only now in imagination. What we think feelingly about tomorrow is what we are conscious of being now. What we are thinking feelingly of being in the past in imagination is also what we are conscious of being now. So we operate from our vision now with faith. For further elaboration on being in the now from your vision, I recommend my recent video that I released on the topic. I'll link in the description to it. I also like how he says, you can be. This is great for anyone having challenges accepting the suggestion that they already are that now. We can easily internally dialogue ourselves into accepting that reality, being now as reality. 
by asking ourselves, is it possible to be? As it's possible to be, therefore, can I be? And as I can't be, therefore, I am now, or something like that. This is what I taught many, and within a few seconds of conversation, they accepted that they are ideally already that now in imagination, and return to operating with faith from their vision, because that's all that's required while working with this power. Imagination and faith in your imaginal activity. The rest is naturally and effortlessly taken care of for you. He says, you must see the picture more and more complete. See the detail. And as the details begin to unfold, the ways and means for bringing it into manifestation will develop. One thing leads to another. Thought will lead to action. Action will develop methods. Methods will develop friends. And friends will bring about circumstances. And finally, the third step, or materialization, will have been accomplished. So this was completely true from my experience. What we imagine and accept as true is what the unseen power is bringing into existence. All roles are played And that's what it's meant by not needing to lift a finger. It's done for you. Everything happens automatically and naturally by law. Operating from a position of faith means operating from a position of certainty. And operating from a place of certainty is beyond operating from beliefs of force and control. That's stated. The appearances of force and control is caused by certain subconscious beliefs in mind. It is a form of unnecessary resistance which can be easily released through conversations with it. I did a video recently outlining the process via self-talk. I'll link in the description to it. Which brings us to one of my favorite parts of the book. He says, We all recognize the universe must have been thought into shape before it could have become a material fact. And if we are willing to follow along the lines of the great architect of the universe, we shall find our thoughts taking form, just as the universe took concrete form. It is the same mind operating through the individual. There is no difference in kind or quality. The only difference is one of degree. So degree can be looked at as physical and spiritual. The spiritual actually does everything. The physical appears to play the roles. The subconscious mind is the bridge of the spiritual and physical. And so you put into your subconscious mind by what you imagine, whatever you accept as true in your imagination. And it is taken care of for you naturally beyond unnecessary force and control-based beliefs. Again, let's go back to the beginning. The quote about Tesla. He says, Nikola Tesla, he with his giant intellect, And remember, as Tesla said also with regards to intelligence, my brain is only a receiver in the universe. There is a core from which we obtain knowledge, strength, and inspiration. And so he's allowing it to happen by faith. And to continue, one of the greatest inventors of all ages, the man who has brought forth the most amazing realities, always visualizes his inventions before attempting to work them out. He does not rush to embody them in form and then spend his time in correcting defects. Having first built up the idea in his imagination, he holds it there as a mental picture to be reconstructed and improved by his thought. In this way, as he writes in The Electrical Experimenter, I'm able to rapidly develop and perfect a conception without touching anything. When I have gone so far as to embody in the invention every possible improvement I can think of and see no fault anywhere, I put into concrete form the product of my brain. And again, to echo what he mentioned, my brain is only a receiver in the universe. There is a core from which we obtain knowledge, strength, and inspiration. And from my experience and everybody that I work with, including you, We all have access to this infinite intelligence now. He says, Invariably, my device works as I conceived it should. In 20 years, there has not been a single exception. So I trust you found this video to be helpful. Let's go ahead and conclude this with an auto-suggestion to further encourage. You can say, I imagine, and thus I know how it is. 
through this loyalty to my unseen reality. It is done for me as all roles being played out with resources and relationships in a loving, mutually harmonious, autotelic, blissful way to realizing my invention, innovation, or artistic expression. If you would like a copy of this mind map, the link is in the description. Thank you very much for watching. I'll talk with you soon. Take care.